Paul, introducing first the challenger from the Federal District of Mexico, Juventud Guerrera. The Mexican heavyweight title bout set to go here at Fall Brawl. And along with Dusty and uh, the Brain, uh, Tony Schiavone, joined by Mike Tenay. Hello, Mike. Tony, great to be back with you guys again. And gentlemen, we're going to attempt to answer the age-old question in this matchup. Can a great little man compete with and beat a great big man, especially when the big man, and when I'm talking about the big man, I say Conan, knows the little man Juventud Guerrero like a book. Yes, I'll he tell does. You the, the excitement's running rapid here tonight at Fall Row. Look at our tremendous crowd on hand. The big man is Conan. Conan, not only a big man, but a man who has changed his demeanor, changed his look, and as we have found out over the last couple of days, as Jimmy Hart leads him in, a man who has now opponent. joined... Welcome to the ring, brother the Dungeon of Jimmy Doom. Hart, and now representing the Dungeon of Doom. Well, Tony, the Conan that we're seeing tonight is, as you mentioned, certainly a different wrestler with a different look and a different attitude than the man that arrived at WCW earlier this year. No question that his U.S. title loss to Ric Flair was really the turning point since then. He's emphasized a win-at-all-costs attitude. He's taken shortcuts in the ring, even in matches against some longtime friends now, actually recruited by the taskmaster, Kevin Sullivan, for the Dungeon of Doom. Let me ask you, Mike, something about Conan. You know, this change in him came when this New World Order came. It came when Holland Nash came. I know there was some bad blood uh, here at WCW with Conan and some guys, but obviously he knows this guy. He studied this guy. He knows what he's up against. And, and I don't know, you talk about speed and power, uh, I've never seen this other young man right here, so he's gonna, it's gonna take a lot for him to overcome this. Well, Conan has been Americanized, and that's what's happened. He came here, Mexican heavyweight champion, did the best he could, but he got Americanized. He, he's dressing like the people here in America. Great waist lock into a released German suplex. Bobby, I talked to Conan about just that subject earlier, and he claims that there was an attempt to Americanize him when he first came into WCW. No, he just threw him right over the top rope all the way, crashing down to the floor. Looks like he may have hurt his ankle. I mean, he, 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 he literally picked him up and tossed him out. But Bobby, he would disagree with you. He claims that when he first came here, they tried to Americanize him. Now he says he's gone back to his roots. This dress that he has is not a fad. It's a way of life and represents the Cholos of Mexico. Moving to Guerrero up on the second one. Walks over three ropes. Tremendous move. A triple jump into a spin kick by Juventud as he turns the tide. Two and no, did not get him, got a two count now. Let's keep in mind too, Mike, as you know and everyone knows, this was originally supposed to be psychosis, but Juventud Guerrera takes the shot because of an injury at the hands of Conan, we understand. Well, you have to give Juventud credit, I think, for taking on this task. Conan, as you mentioned, originally scheduled to face psychosis, but an injury at the hands of Conan. He was unable to appear here tonight. And oh, great move as he flies through the ropes and caught him with that uh, suicide dive, as they call it, a tope in Mexico. Yeah, he caught a little bit of that top rail there too, Iron Mike, and I'll tell you something. That, you know, every move that, that these young men make are so dangerous and so lethal and can turn the tide of battle as this has right here. Using the safety rail in the That was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. We have seen in a span of five minutes so far, wrestlers almost going to the crowd three different occasions. When I looked at this before the matchup strategically, I expected Conan to try and slow things down, use that power, use that weight advantage that he has to try and keep Juventud's high-risk attempts at a minimum. But obviously, everything's out the win window as far as strategy is concerned in this matchup. Well, I'm like, what, what's the take on this thing in Mexico? Everybody's watching this thing. Do, do they believe that Juventud stands a chance against Conan? Dusty, to be honest with you, I think we have to acknowledge that weight, that experience differential between the two. Oh, just planted it. Conan, eight years in the ring, roughly double that of Juventud. Juventud Guerrera gives up around 50 pounds in weight, but I have to admit, Guerrera has poised well beyond his 20 years of age. Caught him with that short, tight drop kick. Trying to cover and gets it. I tell you, the youngster, just like we saw Chavo Jr. earlier on, just will not stay down. Yeah, but for, for Tony, for a guy as big 
as as uh, as he is. When we talk about the the weight differential for a guy as big as he is, he moves quick as a cat. Yes, he does. So he's very astute in doing. He's doing big man stuff as as this smaller guy is doing, and he's gonna hurt you more. Right around, yes and eight. Right around, yeah. Absolutely yes right. and right. This yeah. is. I was asking Mike. I wasn't asking him. Yeah. You didn't ask me right away. This is actually the first head-to-head -head singles bout between the two. Conan's first-hand experience and knowledge of Juventud comes from dozens of meeting in, in tag team matches down in Mexico. Come on, let me know. Let me know. Come on. That's it. You got it worked out, Conan. You got it. Oh. incredible but right now the bottom of the rope the plane is broken and Nick Patrick the referee the first spin kick that time and Conan goes on the outside I'll tell you Hoogie's done everything he can to beat this man oh. I mean, he's come off the ceiling almost on this man but Conan is just too powerful and too ring wide look at his chest would you well Conan is laying flat on his back right now we got to see if, if, if there's an opportunity I would think Iron Mike I would think Something quick, you know what I mean? To get Conan, he's got to get him. I mean, flying and getting him and drop kicking him and, and belly bellying him and uh, and flipping and flopping him. I really believe he got him quick with something. Might really turn the tide of battle or get a one, two, three for him. Great springboard drop oh! kick that time by Guerrero. He's back body dropped over the ropes <laughs> and actually hung out to dry on the top strand of the other ring. Conan will bring him back in the other side. <laughs> he's uh, tossing him around like a wet towel. Throw him up here, Conan. He might do it, but Rain, I tell you, he has thrown him just about everywhere. With the exception of in the gallery. Wow. But this is what we expected as far as Conan's knowledge of submission holds. Try and ground Juventud, work on the leg, and uh, prevent those high-risk attacks. We talked about the attitude change of Conan, and Conan and Juventud know each other quite well, Mike. As a matter of fact, I was told at one time they were tag team champions. They were together tag team champions. They've teamed on many occasions. Uh, thinking back about uh, the career of Juventud Guerrera, he was actually the youngest tag team champion in Mexico. A title that he held with his father. He's obviously a second generation wrestler. His father, Fuerza Guerrero, one of the great welterweights and middleweights in Mexican wrestling history. Great springboard and a moonsault attempt fell just, uh, just shy of nailing Conan on the mark. Yeah, and that could come back to haunt him right here. What a reversal that was. I don't think you can hurt Hoobie. Well, so far he hasn't been able to, but on the other side of the coin, I think Conan is one of the better power bombs we've ever seen. He gets him up way high and slams him down very hard. There's a drop kick on the knee. Further proof of trying to take the legs out from under Guerrera and uh, try and ground that uh, aerial attack. Former world's welterweight champion as well as Juventud Guerrera. Got him with that uh, German suplex and again. Got him up again. One more time. Released on the second attempt at the German by Conan. Right now, out of desperation, Guerrero just rolls out and tries to walk this one off. But I'm surprised he can walk. I'm surprised he's on his feet. I'm also surprised he knows his way around the ring outside. The beating this man's taken. Meanwhile, Conan allowed him to get a breath on the outside. He's talking over some strategy with Jimmy Hart here. You know, with his success in the lighter weight divisions internationally, you'd certainly have to consider Juventud Guerrera as one of the top threats to Rey Mysterio Jr.'s cruiserweight title as I'd well. I'd like to see that. In fact, they're actually no strangers to each other. Quite a rivalry in Mexico, Japan, and the U.S. And in weeks to come, WCW fans in for a unique opportunity as Juventud and Rey, the two rivals, will join forces representing Mexico here in World Championship Wrestling Tag Team Competition. All right. Springboard, missile, drop kick that time on target by Juventud. Juventud gets a second win thanks to what happened with Jimmy Hart going over some strength. No, man, one, two, and... Did he? No. Well, he was close to getting him right there, and I guarantee you one thing. The aggression that Conan has shown is going to really make him, I believe, a force to be reckoned with. Because no matter who he's in there with, he's got that new attitude, and he's a really, really making statements. But right now, this young man is trying to chop a big old tree down. Guerrero 
Backhanded chops. He's up on top. Oh, my goodness. Where are they going to go here? Oh! Trying to backslide him from the apron. Ain't going to work today. Oh, he was caught. Watch out. Conan is on the apron. Hoover two near the safety rail. Anything can happen here. Drop kicked him down. They take a lot more risk than American wrestlers. Well, it's obvious to me that he's had quite an attitude change. And that's good for him, because here at WCW, you can't come in here and pussyfoot around. You better be a man. You better take some people out and build a reputation real quick. Bobby, I think to fully understand Conan's frustrations here at WCW, you have to recognize his standing in Mexico. Number one box office draw in wrestling, a celebrity on TV, the stage, and recording. Success came to him quickly in WCW, but now he's willing to sell his soul as he's joined the Dungeon of Doom. Oh. Guerrero has him stunned up on the top turnbuckle. Juventud, backflip out of it. Double play, drop kick. Down goes Juventud, but that time also, Conan hit the back of his head hard as well. I go back and say again, for a man as big as he is, he can do everything that the little man can do with a lot more power. One and two and no. I wish we knew how long this match was, has gone and then figure out how much time they've spent in the air. Let you do that, Brain. Here's a roll up. One, two, oh. four, and roll out of it. Hooks the legs. Bridges over. One, two. We can have a new check. You got him? No, he didn't get him. Wow. Like the inside of a cheap watch. You know, almost as exciting as watching these spectacular holds, Mike, is watching how these guys get out of them. Great standing switch twice by both men. Off the waist lock, I have to agree with Dusty. I'm just amazed that Conan has been able to compete with the high-risk maneuvers of Juventud Guerrera. Juventud up on top. Great springboard off the top into that spin kick. Caught him right between the shoulder blades. And every time he's got him in a position to cover him, he's got to roll him over or something happens. That's right. He just doesn't get him quick enough. We'll cover again, and Conan's out one more time. Well, that's the only way a man's going to win this match. It's going to be luck. I think, be luck. I think that's Quick the other luck. thing, Dusty. Juventud trying to recover from those high-risk attempts, and it just takes him that second or two yeah. before he's able to try the pinfall. Yeah, one thing, you've got to know when to put a guy away and when he's ready to be put away. Oh! I, think, I think that Conan just figured out that it's time to put him away. He's ready to be put away. Incredible counter move. I've never seen a move like that ever. Pull ever. him in the middle. Pull him in the middle. He's still under the ropes. One, three. Nick Patrick is right in there with him. And I think Hoopatude is very lucky he was close to the ropes that time, guys. So that one would have been over. He had him on that one. Oh, my goodness. I'm surprised he's even getting to his feet now. Look at this. Body scissors. Using the springboard again into a drop kick. Boy, both men are weary. You can see that both are slowing down a great deal here. Great conditioning, though. Yeah, you're not kidding. It, you know, they're in great condition. But watch this. Watch this. Somersault leg drop off the top by Juventud. Nice foot's on the rope. They try kick him in the back. You tried everything else. Can I say something about Nick Patrick here? I think he's done a great job in this match. Okay. Anybody want to? You, you said it. Okay. Would you agree with me? The new world order's not out there. Yes or no, President? All right. All right, WCW maybe not out there. What's at stake here is a Mexican heavyweight title, a very prestigious title Whoa! for both these guys. You know what I mean? What would be the international ramification of Nick Patrick messing this thing up, Iron Mike? Well, what? I don't think Mike knows what a ramification is. Sure he does. He read my book, wrote it, and he's got it in his bag. He certainly has been the center of controversy in World Championship Wrestling lately, but I have to agree with Tony calling it right down the line here. Tremendous spin move off the top, gets a quick cover. And he kicked out again. Oh, determination, conditioning like you said earlier, Brain, these two men. I said they may be slowing down, they would have to. All these tremendous, spectacular moves and counters and kickouts and high impact blows. We've seen it all here. Oh. How about that power bomb into a bridge over one, two. He's not going nowhere. Well, two, he didn't get him. Phenomenal. Could not believe this. I think the most amazing aspect of this match has been the resiliency on the part of both men. Just incredible. Yeah, they both brought it. They brought it to the table. They sure have, Dream. Up on top. The Maybe going to improvise here. Thought about going up top with him. Hooks oh. him. 
almost a combination cannot get superplex up brain buster. One, two, three. Oh. No, not a three. I really believe he kicked out out of instinct. You know when you get hit somewhere and you're in a car wreck and they see you staggering down the road when you're really out? That's what happened there. Instinct going for another one. It's been like a car wreck in many ways. How many car wrecks you get into a week and stagger down the road? <laughs> I have no idea. Mike, do you have any idea what he's going to do here? Maybe Conan setting him up for that power drop, he calls it. Power drop. Oh, there it is. Into a power bomb. One, two, three. Wow. Got today. I can only wonder if he'd have kicked out from that one. What else would he be hitting with? I mean, for crying out loud, he hit him with everything. And finally, with the power drop, Juventud Guerrero goes down in what has to go down as one of the <laughs> better you. Mexican heavyweight matches you ever seen. Arriba! 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 Ar